Audio Jungle. Hello everyone, I'm Zachary from Duke Christian University. Today I'm going to talk about viruses. Viruses are everywhere. In the tense epidemic situation, we are paying more and more attention to the virus. So let's start by talking about the characteristics of most viruses. What is the structure of virus? They are much simple in structure than even prokaryotic cells. Virus consists of nucleic acid surrounded by a protein coat. Viruses are classified as DNA viruses or RNA viruses. The genome is either a single liner or circular molecule of the nucleic acid. A capsid is the protein shell that encloses the viral genome, which are built from protein subunits called capsomeres. Capsid have various structures. Here are the different structures of different viruses. For the tobacco mosaic virus, nucleic capsid proteins are helical and nucleic acids are single-stranded RNA. Adenovirus is a spherical structure without a capsule, and its virus are usually arranged in a lattice pattern in the nucleus of the infected cell. Each virus particle contains a 36 kb liner double-stranded DNA. Most bacterial phages are typical shaped with a head and a tail. The head is composed of a protein shell wrapped around nucleic acid, a hexagonal stereosmith symmetry. Each IV has an outer envelope, and in the center it has two copies of RNA, as well as an enzyme. This is reverse transcriptase, which will ultimately turn RNA into DNA. Okay, so this is the structure of virus. Now we may wonder that how it works? Let's take HIV as an example. HIV will lead to acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which we call AIDS. Viruses that infect animals have a membrane envelope. Viral glycoproteins on the envelope bind to specific receptor molecules on the surface of a host cell. HIV enters cells to recognize the CD4 receptor. It is CD4 molecules, defines T helper cell. Then it causes a conformational change. It will activate T helper cells to allow a second receptor to grab hold of envelope, forming the chemokine coreceptor. co-receptor. The stalk of the envelope protein pierces through from the virus into the whole cell and starts to draw the two cell membrane. Proviruses are used to describe other viruses that can integrate into the host chromosome. It may account for approximately 8% of the human genome in the form of inherited endogenous retroviruses. Its capsid doesn't get into the cell, so the fusion, it just gets into the provirus. Retroviruses use reverse transcriptase to copy their RNA genome into DNA. Then it will integrate its DNA into host genome. The DNA will be transcripted to RNA. Later, the RNA will be translated into viral protein. Proteins will cleave the viral polyprotein. Then HIV was budding and the T cell function was diminished. Now we, we may wonder that why does the immune system recognize it? Because HIV has a helper gene called NEF. The primary function of the NEF protein is to downregulate these two CD4 and CCR5 molecules on the cell surface after the virus enters the cell. Downregulation of CD4 also disrupts the expression of FASL, which was associated with apopt apoptosis, and the binding of FAS to it can induce cell suicide. It will interfere with IFN production, which is a cytokine with antiviral properties, thereby reducing the immune response to its infection. You can get HIV through unprotected cells, sharing drug injection, childbirth, breastfeeding, contaminated blood, and blood products. 
So how can we prevent infection? Antiretrovirals prevent HIV infection by preventing the virus from attaching to cells. Antiretroviral drugs can be divided into fusion, reverse transcriptase inhibitors, protease inhibitors, and integrase inhibitors. They can kill HIV completely, but they can slow the virus's proliferation, giving the immune system enough time to recover to fight off infection. To avoid HIV protection, we should know our HIV status and avoid vaginal and anal sex and limit sex to one infected partner and avoid injectable illegal drugs or shared needle. That is my presentation for virus. Thanks for watching.